Hello, hello LinkedIn, hello YouTube. Uh, welcome to another uh, episode of my series Unleash Your Green Gorilla. Uh, welcome, I am Virginia Cinquemani. I'm the director and founder of Green Gorilla Consultants LTD, which is a training and coaching company focused on empowering sustainability professionals and leaders to make an impact. And very much at Par Street today, uh, we are talking about the five key steps to influence others to buy into sustainability. This is something that I hear lots of people are struggling with, is the idea of selling sustainability or influencing others to adopt sustainability. So I thought, uh, let's focus on this. And the idea of this, the idea of influencing others to buy into sustainability came quite strongly when I was reading um, a book for my research uh, to write my second book. The first is here on my <laughs> here, sustainable, but I'm uh, basically researching to write a second book about selling and influencing people to buy into sustainability. And the book I was reading is this, uh, which is probably, it comes you know, mirrored, Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. So if, and Chris Voss is an ex-FBI hostage negotiator. Um, so I thought, if there are people in this world that they can manage to get to criminals to come out with their hands up, surely we can influence, you know, normal people can influence others to buy into sustainability. So that's the, you know, that's the basic idea behind influencing others. And that's, and having read the book actually, and having read, you know, other books as well, like The Catalyst um, uh, by Jonas Berger and, uh, you know, and other material around this, it is possible to influence others to buy into your ideas of sustainability. But um, if you are here, if you're listening to me, it would be great if you could introduce yourself, tell me where you are from, what you do, and whether you have uh, specific questions around influencing others to buy into sustainability. But let's go straight into the heart of it. So the basic concept behind the idea of influencing others is the fact that we are people and that people in general work, you know, the whole brain work in a very similar way. We are influenced by fear and we are influenced by price. So what we want and what we are scared of. Uh, we are uh, scared of losing what we already have, but we also want other things. And that's a basic survival mechanism that everyone is subject to. So when uh, the classic example that I get from my client or people I, sp I spoke to um, to write the book is that often the main objection of clients is sustainability costs too much. So let me share this. Um, so it costs too much happens to be the tip of the iceberg. It costs too much is what people tell you just so that you go away. <laughs> and often a sustainability professional, somebody who's negotiating um, the sustainability situation will stop there and say, okay, it costs too much, they haven't got a budget. But there are many, many other la layers underneath the surface. So it costs too much is the easy excuse to send you away. But then underneath, there are very basic human fears connected to uh, adopting sustainability, which for most people is still something that is new to them, completely new. So what if I look like a fool? Uh, what if I lose my customers? So both of these objections are connected to the fear of losing their status or their relatedness with other people. I'm going to talk about five main elements. So five somehow is coming back again and again in my in my discussions. But so five main reasons why people behave in a certain way. One, because they are scared of losing their status. So what if I look like a fool and my colleagues or my peers think I am I'm crazy? What if I lose my customers? Because again, they don't think we are delivering what they want. But it's also about relationship and lack of. Um, other 
say, you know, underneath, they might be thinking, I can't be bothered, it's too difficult, too complicated, or I really don't know where this is going to take me. So there is an uncertainty element, which is a very strong, strong motivator for not, uh, uh, you know, for, for inertia, basically, for not doing something. Uh, another element is they might not understand it. And again, it goes back to be an uncertain field or something new. Um, or what's in it for me? People are fundamentally selfish and uh, they are in business because they want to make money. And if they don't see an immediate return, then the question is, what's in it for me? So that's another one. Um, I haven't got time. You know, people are stretching different directions and this is not priority. So they, the reason why there is an excuse, like it costs too much, I haven't got time, I haven't got resources, is because they don't prioritize it. And you need to understand why that is. And of course, you know, they might criticize, you know, the political aspect of this. So sustainability is a very politicized uh, argument, so useless tree huggery, you know, they might still of <laughs> the opinion that um, sustainability is actually not necessary, is something that is, um, you know, nice to have, or even something just for tree huggers, you know, a few people still are that idea. So when we, um, when we talk to people, it's really important to understand the what's below the surface of the iceberg whether it's something to do with status, with certainty, or even autonomy, you know, am I going to be able to do this by myself? Or will I rely on other people all the time? Relatedness, so again, to do with the relationship with people and fairness as well. Is this fair? We always operated in the same way. How is this fair that we need to change things now? These five things, a state of certainty, autonomy, relatedness, and fairness are the five elements that really constitute um, to change and you know the, the, the fears that people have connected to change that have been studied by neuroscientist David Rock. But let's move on to the negotiation. So why how can we influence people? Now Chris Voss again the one that wrote to never speak the difference has said when the pressure is on you don't rise to the occasion you fall to your highest level of preparation which I really like. You know how intense negotiations could be and how your brain might go in complete survival mode, fight or flight, you know, that sort of feeling. So if you've prepared before, which is something that we don't really do before we go into a meeting, we don't thoroughly prepare to, to go to a meeting especially when we want to sell our services or sustainability solutions or whatever that is. Um, you know how you lose your focus. So if you have prepared, you will have already a roadmap. You already have goals and uh, possible objections, which I'm going to talk about in a second. You will know what to say, what to do without relying on your brain to remember it in a high stake, high stress situation. So how can we do that? So I would say before you even start, uh, one good idea would be to leave your ego at the door. Focus on the other person, focus on your audience, um, because you're not there to showcase and show off your technical abilities. You're there to provide a service. And the more you see it as a way of helping others of sorting their problems out, sort their problems out, the more, so the easiest it will be, the easier it will be for you. So leave the ego at the door. Doesn't matter, you know, at this stage, your technical abilities is granted, but focus 100% on the other person. So that's the mindset shift that you need to really embrace. So number one step to influence others, so to bind to sustainability, will be before the meeting, understanding what's your goal was the best outcome and the worst outcome that you might get at the end of that particular meeting. And focus on the best outcome. So I'll give an example. In my original field, which is sustainable architecture and built environment, um, it's very common to be engaged by a client, a potential client, a developer, to carry out a sustainability assessment for a building. But that's the bare minimum. That's the tick box exercise, tick, 
tick box exercise that most uh, uh, companies would want to do because they need it for planning permission, they need it for releasing uh, maybe funding, etc. But that's the bare minimum. If I'm a sustainability professional, you know, they want to really push sustainability, I know that I need them to embrace more. I know that I need them to have sustainability strategies and maybe operational, uh, you know, ma um, operational management systems that are focused on sustainability. So I want them to go beyond the bare minimum. That's for me the objective. If I focus on the worst outcome, which is either no project or just the environmental assessment, then I will leave that negotiation feeling deflated. But if I focus on my best outcome, maybe share it with a colleague, discuss it with somebody else, uh, then it will cement in my head. And then when I got into the negotiation, it will be already there in my head. I won't need to formulate it on the spot. Number two, so second step would be understanding your audience. Um, and I, sp I speak about it a lot because I think this is actually the fundamental difference between selling sustainability and not selling sustainability is that focus on the other person. It's important to have a summary in your head of what um, they might think. So you need to do your research beforehand and your understanding of what they're asking you. Um, but that's the starting point. Then you need to ask a lot of questions and use what I call a coaching approach to ask what they need. Um, what do they want? Um, why are you here? Um, what's the biggest challenge? What are they trying to accomplish? Because, again, you are trying to help them. And at this stage, I would say it's a good time, even at the beginning, to start adopting a tactical um, a tactical empathy, which is what Chris Voss called it, tactical em uh, empathy, which is, doesn't mean being, you know, cunning or, you know, do, you know, lying to the other person or trying to be something you're not. It's simply step into your client's shoes and understand where they come from. You don't have to agree with them. You don't have to justify their behavior if you don't agree with that behavior, but you definitely need to understand where they come from. So that's the tactical empathy, is really try and see what takes them to you and to reject, in a way, your ideas. So if they say costing or whatever, so why? Why, why is that? What is the biggest challenge? Super important. What do they need? What do they want? So all of this, listening and asking and asking good questions and adopting tactical empathy are all fundamental steps uh, to understand your audience better. And there are other things, but you know, here we, we really sort of touching the surface. Um, objections, number three, so third step. Um, it's really important to understand what are the objections, what are the barriers for adoption? Because often they say, no, as I said, you know, it costs too much, we don't have the resources. But, and, and you might want to go straight into the negotiation thinking, I know what you're thinking. I know that you might think this is expensive. And that is what is called the accusation labeling. So you actually open accusation audit. So you already preempt what they want to say. Uh, or it seems like you're worried about losing money, or it seems like you're worried about losing your customer base, or whatever you think that is. And it's important because that diffuses a little bit to the power of that particular fear in their head, and the barriers start going down. But it's important to understand what are their objections underneath the surface. And that's... Um, you know, when you will see that is maybe down to, you know, also um, money, um, maybe, yeah, maybe actually cost is an issue. But beyond, you know, the psychological element, um, maybe there are some practical things that, that they might want to consider, like money, or maybe maybe you want to focus at this stage, which is, you know, number four, go beyond the surface. You might want to focus at this stage on the potential benefits. What do they need? What do they need for their business? Is it marketing, more customers, better reputation, better staff? 
um, savings? Um, what is it that they need? Because you can address, in the last point, the perfect sustainability solution for them. And it's important in the negotiation process, beyond quite questioning, also to relabel the thoughts of your audience. So again, repeating, okay, it seems that money is important for you. Okay, it seems that reputation is your most uh, important, you know, is the first priority. And that's a way, again, to cement in, in, your, in your clients and your audience head what they're actually saying is giving them an opportunity to think really deeply as well. Because people act very emotionally, you know, in spite of what it looks like, people act super emotionally. So it's important as well to um, allow them to think deeply and to really understand uh, their own thinking in a way. So once you have understood, um, you know, you have your goal in your head, you have understood the, you know, the, the bottom line of the issues, so there are objections and uh, also the motivations of what drives them. So why they will be, you know, speaking to you, but also what they want to achieve, maybe at, at a wider scale uh, in their business. The fifth step, another key step, is to present the perfect solution for them. So usually, as sustainability professionals, as technical people, we start with what we know best. So we might have actually pushed that solution right at the beginning. But you need to build up to it. You need to build that rapport. You need to create that environment. And then, only then, once you understood who they are, what they stand for, what objections they have, and try and diffuse them in the best possible way, you present the perfect solution for them. So, with the objections that they might have, you will need to basically help them um, with potentially overcoming those objections. So, if, they, if they're worried, for example, they don't know enough about it, you can explain it. If they think they are like a fool or they might look like a fool, then show them others that have done it before them um, so that they feel a bit reassured. Or if they said, you know, I haven't got time, help them, you know, with templates, with your own work, with uh, maybe with resources if you have anyone available to support them. So always try and see a no as a temporary no. It's just the starting point of a negotiation. It's not the end point of the negotiation. So finally, present the perfect solution for them. Um, now, I want to share something with you in that sense, which I think could be helpful, because people don't want a quarter-inch drill, they want a quarter-inch hole, said Theodore Le Levitt, who was an economist, an American economist. What does it mean? It means if I have a drill, <laughs> so if that's a drill, and I want to present to my audience a smart city. So, so, for example, my potential client is a council or you know local authority of some sort. Um, they want money saving, safer roads, less traffic, efficient public services, elderly people living independently. That's the whole. That's what they need and they want. While you might be talking about connectivity, smart sensors, open data platforms, digital technologies, things that actually they don't care about. This is what you are an expert of, but they don't need to even know. What they want is, again, the results, the money saving, the safer roads, the less traffic, the less traffic, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the concept behind it. What solutions do they need and how can you give them that what they need via your sustainability um, solutions. And the way to do that usually is um, by presenting potential benefits to their business, again, depending on what they need. Usually they fall into three categories in the benefits. So return on investment, so that's all the money, the investment, the green bonds, the, um, the, 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 the savings, all the money-related benefits. There is a risk management as well, which is all the reputational um, enhancement, is the due diligence, 
um, the avoiding fines in the future, is the insurance um, side of things, all the risk management elements. And then there is the growth element, which is attracting new business, attracting new customers, new staff, innovating uh, per se, and um, etc. So every possible client will be interested in at least one of these categories. You need to just understand what is the whole <laughs> uh, instead of uh, presenting them with the drill. OK, um, and that's it. And that's all I wanted to uh, talk about today. Um, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer any questions. But also I wanted to share with you that this is one of the things that we discuss in the uh, Sustainable Mastermind, which is starting in September. So we are on the third round of Masterminds. We had fantastic results in the first three rounds. People really you know, enjoy the experience. It's not just me uh, saying that. You can go on the website and see the testimonials. Um, we are opening the applications for the Sustainable Mastermind. Um, it's only limited places because I want them to be a very intimate uh, type of experience where people really trust each other. There is complete confidentiality because we share our vulnerability and we are growing together as, as a group, effectively. Um, so I'm opening the application. So this is the link that you see uh, below to apply for the Mastermind. And uh, we start in September and we will let you know uh, towards the end of August whether you got a place or not in the mastermind. But ideally, uh, so just, just to summarize what the mastermind is, is a group of like-minded people, peer-to-peer -peer group of sustainability professionals and leaders working together to hone their soft skills, which is the communication, the selling and influencing, the resilience and the uh, project and people management as per the framework of Green Gorilla. And we do it in a four month program. Uh, we meet every week and then we set some challenges as well because skills have to be practiced in order to be honed. So we, we have a challenge at the beginning of the month which we implement and also discuss at the end of the month with a, a group coaching session. And uh, finally, within the package, there is also one-to-one -one, uh, coaching session per month with, with me to support you in your own issues, your own uh, barriers uh, that you, you might want to overcome. So that's what's the mastermind. Uh, if you're interested, either get in touch or fill the application form that is uh, in, um, down the screen right now and I hope you enjoyed it and do get in touch if you have any questions about influencing others to buy into sustainability but otherwise this is it for me and I will see you next time bye